do anything with this, let's go and let's make sure that the, the UI looks right. All right? It'll be functional. It will have what it should have in it, but it's not going to look very good. All right? We'll, we'll do go and we'll put some styling in to this. All right? Um, I'm a firm believer of doing a little piece at a time. All right? Instead of going in and developing a whole big uh, giant uh, chunk of code, and then you notice that none of it works, it's better in my mind to develop a piece of it, test that, go back, do the second piece, test that, and so on down the line. All right, so I'm going to run this, and we'll see what it looks like. When the browser comes up, I'm going to zoom the screen so we get a better, closer look at it. So we can enter the amount, we can pick that, we can say dine in, yes or no, and calculate. Right now it doesn't do anything, right, because we haven't wired this to anything. That button just clicks and, and, and goes on. All right? Did dine in clear when you clicked calculate? No. Nope. Oh, you didn't click it. I must have clicked it off, or I don't know. But yeah, they remember their state. So, okay. What do we need to do from the user interface perspective? We need to make this look better. All right. Um, the other thing we need to do is we need to add some validation uh, to this. All right. So let's go and let's do that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a CSS file. And what I'm going to do is we'll give the form a border. All right. Before I go any further and become surprised here, I'm going to go and I'm going to link that style sheet to this so that I know that, that that's going to apply. And I'll give a title because I forgot that. Some of the times it gives you the quotes for free. Some of the times it doesn't. Keep you on your toes. All right. Now if I go to design view, notice, yeah, my form has a border on it. All right. Good for it. Um, what I'm going to do is, through my CSS, I'll also say something like, with 80%. It won't go the width of the whole the whole width of the screen, just for good measure. I'll then go in and say labels. I want to have a width of forty percent. And I'm going to do text align. Right.
seem to do what I wanted it to. Because all of the... Why didn't the width work? Because labels are inline elements. So I have to say display inline black. Now if I look at this... All right, it works the way that I intended it to. So all these are lined up this way. But this is ugly, right? Um, and I might want to put a little bit of space between these. So let's go and, and change that. All right. One thing I want to do is I had a colon after the one. After the one label, I'll put a colon after all of them. That'll be consistent. I want to put a bit of a margin on this. I want to put a right margin. Five pixels. And I want to remove those ugly dots. So I can say form. UL, in other words, every unordered list within a form tag, make the list list item style? Let's Google it. I don't know. This is one that half the time I remember, half the time I don't. List style type. ways we could do it. What I'm going to do is I will put a class on this equal to button and I will say that my button right I put a class thank you Text align center. So now I run this here. And we could do more. We want to push the button down. How would we do that? 
margin on the top. So you see, we have something pretty straightforward going here, um, looking pretty good. All right. All right. Now I'm going to validate, and I'm going to validate to make sure, first of all, that there's something entered in the amount, and that something is a number. Okay. So close out of here. I'm going to go and drag my required field validator next to that. I'm going to go and drag my compare validator next to that. All right. Now, you might wonder why I picked a compare validator. A compare validator. Um, can be used to compare two items on a form together. It can also do a data type check. All right. So I'll go here and I will put the error message must enter an amount. For what we talked about a couple times ago, I'm going to make the display to this dynamic. And I have to specify the control I want to validate, which is txt bill. My compare validator, I'm going to put the error message of must enter a number and I will say that this, the control that I want to validate is txt bill. It needs to be a double, or it needs to be currency. And value to compare ah, operator rather data type check. All right, so now let's go around this. Don't put anything there, it gives us this error. Put garbage in, it gives us that error. I could play around with the spacing so that we don't have overlap on that, but we should be okay. Actually, I want to make this one dynamic too. So if there's no error, it doesn't take up the space. I'll center an amount. I'll center a number. Center an amount. I'll center a number. All right. So we're good to go now. Now what we want to do is we want to start working on the results. All right. So um, what I'm going to do is um, is what is I'm going to create some ASP.NET labels. Again, why am I not using the HTML label? Well, I'm not using the HTML label because this isn't tied to a form control. It's not the label for a form control. So there's no accessibility thing going on here. All right. And just to contrast the other kind of label, I want to do it for that reason as well. All right. So let's go in and let's drag some labels here. Let's start out doing 
doing just the tip. All right. So I will go and I will add two labels. One's going to contain the text. Tip amount is. And one is going to contain, eventually, the calculated value. So right now, I'm going to write the words calculated tip in there. All right. This one, I'm going to change to label tip. This one, I guess I could change it to, from label one. But you know what? I'm probably not going to program that. So I may just be sloppy and leave it as label one. All right. Uh, just for the, the, the fact that I'm not really ever going to program that, more than likely. So, uh, you know, I'm less concerned with making it a, 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 a meaningful name. So now we go and run this, and we'll see. All right. Doesn't look bad. We can maybe style it a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of margin, a bottom margin on the button. I trust that you're following all the CSS I'm, I'm doing. Um, if not, please ask me like in lab or whatever, if it's been a while since you've done CSS or, or maybe you haven't really been exposed to CSS. Um, ask me because I, I'm not, my intent isn't to like be, be treading new ground here. Uh, my thought is is that what I'm doing here is a review. I'm just doing some very basic stuff just to give you an idea of what you could do to style this. All right. So now we are ready to write our code. All right. So I'll double click on the calculate button and that will give me the code for the button calculate click event. Alright. Now, what do we want to do? We want to grab the value from the text box, grab the value from the drop down, test the value of the drop down. If the value of the drop down is P, then calculate the tip based on poor. If it is um, average, calculate it based on 15% average, and if it's excellent, calculate it based on 20% for excellent. So, I'm going to declare a couple variables here. Double bill. Double tip equals zero. String for level of service. Why do we have those green underlines? Because we haven't used them yet. Um, it, it's nice enough to point out if you have a variable declared that you don't use. And, and that, that's a good thing, right? Because if you declare a variable and not using it, what's the point of, of having that variable? All right? Um, and, and maybe you're, you're mistaken and you're using the wrong variable in, in one case where you should be using the tip variable, you're using the bill variable, and therefore you're never using the tip variable. So that's sort of like a hint, hey, there's probably something wrong. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the level of the service from the dropdown. All right? How do I do that? Well, I my assignment statement, str level of service equals, I need to point to the object, to the component on the page that has uh, for the dropdown. What is that? 
object. That object is called DD service. So I'm going to refer to this element on the page using its ID. So I'll say equals DD service. Is that enough? No. Right? DD service is what? It's a drop down. How many attributes does a drop down have? It has a lot of them. It has a width, it has a height, um, it has a, a, a whole array of elements. We're then, we need then to be more specific. What is it about the drop down am I interested in? What in the drop down corresponds to the level of service? Is it the height of the drop down? No, of course not. It's the value that was selected. So if we look at our properties here, we'll see one of them is selected value. So that is a complete statement. We have our variable, str, uh, string, uh, str level of service, and that's equal to, from the dropdown, grab the selected value. We're going to see this dot notation all over the place, right? Because we have to point to the controls on the page. We're accessing their properties so that we can use those properties in calculation. All right? So, when we point to them, we're pointing to an object. And an object has a whole bunch of properties. We have to zoom in on the specific property that we're interested in. In this case, we're interested in the selected value. All right? There's other properties, the selected index. Was the zeroth element chosen? Was the first element chosen? And so on. All right? So, we have to do the same thing for double bill. Well, what's the name of the text box that contains bill? TXD bill. Dot. This isn't a drop down, right? So it doesn't have a selected value. If we scroll down, the property that we're interested in is the text. Now, it gave us a red squiggly line. Why did it give us a red squiggly line there? different data type. If we put our mouse over this to look at the error, it says that cannot convert, implicitly convert a string to a double. Now that's one thing if you've done VB programming, and assuming you've done some VB programming, depending on your settings, sometimes VB was forgiving, and if you gave it a string, it would try to make a number out of it, unless you use the option explicit, option strict. All right, in C Sharp, there's no implicit conversions other than very straightforward ones. For example, you could convert an integer to a double, right? Because they're both numbers. So if I had an integer that had a value of 12 and I had a double, I could say double equals integer, and it would do that because it can put, it can take an integer and make a double out of it. That's just math. Here, though, it has no idea. So what I can use is there's a function double dot. What this does is this takes the string and makes a double out of it. Remember, a text box is a text box. You can put any string in it. Now, we validated that to make sure that it's a number, but still, all right, the, proper, the text property of a text box is a string. It's not a double, even if we do the validation on it. So, therefore, we have to parse it to change that into a double, and we can use that instruction to do it. All right, so we now have our um, level of service. We have our bill amount. Now we can get to calculating. 
Alright? So, I can say if str level of service equals p. Now, you're not seeing double. All right? There really are two equal signs there. All right? Remember that there are two purposes for the equal sign in, in programming. It's true in every programming language, but we're going to talk about how C sharp handles the difference. The, the two uses of the equal signs are that one of the equal signs is used, uh, one use of the equal sign is to do assignment. In other words, this variable equals this value. That's what we're doing here. That's what we're doing here. The other use of the equal sign is to compare two values and to say, hey, is this equal to that? For that in C sharp, we use the two equal signs. I can almost guarantee that that will be a problem that will be driving you crazy at some point in the semester. You'll be looking at your code and you'll be saying, my code's right, but the if statement ain't working right. That should be the first thing you look for if your if statements aren't working right. Are you using the, the double equal sign versus the single equal sign? All right. So if the level of service is equal to P, then my tip equals zero. Yes. The selected value attribute that you got mm -hmm. from the drop down. That's returning that value. It's returning the value, not, not the text. Not the text. Okay. Right. All right. Again, the assumption is, is that the value is what the program needs. So if you say selected value, that's what is returning. I meant to look at the source, the HTML source. We'll do that next round. this one because I started out and I'm not a quitter. But if you think it helps the clarity of it, just do three separate if statements. Yeah, your, your code will process more if statements than it needs to, but so what? You know how fast those things run? It's negligible difference. So I can say here double tip equals Double bill times 0.15. And lastly, under my else, it can say double tip equals that times 20. Notice when I finally put that else in there, it was smart enough to realize, yeah, no matter what, I'm somehow using that variable. All right? Up until the point of putting in that last else, it was still possible that I could run through all this and never access that variable. Now I'm guaranteed to access that variable. Now, I've kept